Welcome to the 3 o'clock news. I'm your anchor, Chad Mansbridge. And I'm Mike. Today's top story, tension has been building at Red River between the Métis people and the Hudson's Bay Company. The tension has recently resurfaced after Miles McDonald put the Pemmican Proclamation in place, which forces the Métis people to give their pemmican to members of the Hudson's Bay Company. Tension initially started to rise when Thomas Douglas, or Lord Selkirk, was granted a plot of land known as the Selkirk Grant. He instructed Miles MacDonald to lead a group of farmers over from Scotland to farm at Red River, since the soil was so fertile and it would be a cheaper way of getting food to the people who worked at the Hudson's Bay Company. He did this because he felt sorry that they had been kicked off of their land due to the highland clearances. In 1812, they arrived at Red River very late, which meant they couldn't do any farming. In 1813, a group of Scottish, another group of Scottish settlers arrived. Both groups went to Red River and started to clear land. That year, the crops failed, so they had to go back to Fort Pembina. In 1814, the crops succeeded, but Miles MacDonald feared, feared that the crops may fail again, so he put the Pemmican Proclamation in place. In other news, Duncan Cameron, the Northwest Company chief trader, has just arrested Lyle McDonough for his mistreatment for Métis people. We'll go back with more after the break. You may think I have a bad case of the acne. Well, you're wrong. I have smallpox. Smallpox is an infectious virus that affects people of all ages, but is most fatal to children. If you get it once, you'd never get it again. Most people who survived it would often be scarred or even blind. If you know anyone with smallpox, stay away. But also, donate to the Red River Smallpox Fund. And now it's time for What Up in Pop Culture with Brittany Benoit. Brittany. Oh, hey guys. So, guess what? You're never gonna believe this one, okay? You ready? So, like, George Simpson, head of the HBC, just married his cousin. Francis Simpson, like, how gross is that? Like, ugh, just, ugh, so gross. Like, he was dating this one day tea chick, and then he said he had to go back to England because he's like, super important, like, head of HBC. I mean, super, super important. And then, bam, he just marries his cousin. Like, how gross is that? Like, ugh, it's just so gross. I mean, and this, other chick, Frances Simpson, she hates the Métis people. So he had, he just kicked this up girl out and her kids like, what a jerk. Ugh. We'll be back with more after the break. This is a developing story just out of Red River. We have been told by multiple sources that Cuthbert Grant and the Métis people have killed Robert Semple along with 20 or so of his men. This comes after Cuthbert Grant led a raid on some HBC boat, boats that were floating in the Assiniboine River to get some pemmican in order to make up for the pemmican that they lost in the Pemmican Proclamation. In other news, Lord Selkirk has reached a deal with the Ojibwa and Cree tribes gaining Red River Valley in exchange for a hundred pounds of tobacco annually. We have been talking a lot about the Hudson Bay Company and how they are handling the situation between the Northwest Company and the Métis people and Red River. Today, we have the leader, George Simpson, here to discuss the topic. Thanks for being here, Mr. Simpson. Thanks for having me. What's your opinion on the Northwest Company? I think they're a miserable waste of a company and should cease to exist. Wow, those are some uh, strong words. What did you develop this opinion out of? Well, they traded with those wretched, good for nothing, maybe people. Who broke our monopoly? We were granted access to Rupert's land, not them. They started to weave and trade within Rupert's land without consulting us. Does that answer your question, Mike? Yes, it does. Well, um, well, thanks. Okay, we will be back after the break. The anti-Catholic, anti-French Orange Order have just recently formed another group called the Canadian Party. This is breaking news. We have just been told that the Métis people have captured Dr. John Schultz and Thomas Scott. Mr. Schultz is the owner of the newspaper The Norwester, where he expresses his anti-Métis views, and Thomas Scott also shares the same anti-Métis views. The Métis people have not been giving the new governor of the Northwest Territories, William McDougall, a warm welcome after they repeatedly told him to go back to Ottawa 
because they didn't need a governor. We will have more after the break. Tired of waiting to plain old bannock and hauling around your bison and grab river carts? Try Bemmican. It's made out of bison and dried fruits and nuts. Buy it now. The Métis people in Red River have just occupied Fort Garry, which seems to show that they are rebelling. It is being called the Red River Rebellion. The Métis people, led by Louis Riel, took over Fort Garry and raided all of its supplies after being angered by HGC, selling Rupert's land to Canada without the consent of the Métis. Louis Riel has been said to have set up a provisional government which wants to negotiate with the Prime Minister of Canada about becoming a part of the Confederation. The Métis people have also drawn up a Métis Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which states the series of rights that they demand. In recent report, we have stated that Thomas Scott has been taken captive by the Canadian Party. Well, we have just been told that he has just been executed by firing squid. We will update this situation as more information becomes available. Prime Minister John A. Macdonald sent 1,200 troops into Red River led by Colonel Wolseley after Manitoba was officially admitted into the Confederation of Canada. It has been said that after receiving that news that Louis Riel had fled Canada. Louis Riel has now been officially banished from Canada for five years. Thanks for watching Red River News Network. Have a great night. Thank you.